glad you stopped by today. I'm happy to see you. I wanted to go to part two of things that you can stack up on on a low income. Um, this, of course, is mostly plant-based things. I'm not going to be talking about meats and cheeses and, and all that stuff. This is staple things that you can keep in your pantry and um, for future use. So let me get on with it. I have a nice big list here. Okay. Um, check into getting some dried potatoes. Now you can get um, mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. They make flavored ones. I like the Idahoan. Uh, I think they're very good. They have a lot of different flavors. I make mine with plant-based milk. I don't make it with water and it gives it a really rich flavor. Um, but you can make yours with milk too. Uh, the package directions, I believe, say like half water and half milk, but I like to use all milk and it gives it a very, very nice, rich texture. Um, also, you can buy um, dried shredded hash browns that you rehydrate. Um, those last a long time on your shelf. You can keep those or you can buy potatoes when they're on sale. And if you have a dehydrator, you can slice them thin on a mandolin and uh, dehydrate them in a dehydrator. Or if you don't have that, if you have an oven on the lowest temperature and just it'll take probably a good 10, 12 hours, depending on how thick you cut them. Uh, you can also dehydrate them if you have an air fryer that's capable of dehydrating things. And then um, just keep them in an airtight container. And then you can rehydrate those as well. Or you can buy those um, pre-made boxed dried potato. Uh, you know, you can get like... Um, some with cheeses and, and uh, scalloped. So those, those sorts of things. I'm not a big fan of prepared foods, but in a pinch, those work well. So I would recommend that. Of course, all kinds of pastas, and they're cheap. Pasta's really cheap. So every time you go to the store, pick up some extra pasta. Pick up spaghettis and lasagnas and, and just all kinds of different shapes so that you can um, put them in soups, you can make lasagnas, you can make um, rolls out of the lasagna, um, you know, spread them with cheese or fillings or pestos or whatever and roll them up and put a sauce on them. So that, that's a good thing to store and Dollar Tree has all those things. So like I said in my previous video, put away Five dollars a week and if all you can afford is to go to the Dollar Tree and pick up one dollar things it, it that's great that's a great thing to have and that's probably the cheapest way to go about picking up um, some of these things I know they have the Idaho and potatoes I know they have uh, lots of pasta so um, give that a try um, all right, uh, cornstarch, always have cornstarch on hand, also a little extra. You can make a lot of things with cornstarch. You can make puddings, you can make pie fillings, you can, you can make um, uh, plant-based cheeses. A lot of those will use cornstarch in them. It has so many uses. Uh, you can use it uh, as a deodorant if you need to in a pinch. Uh, it's very absorbent of liquids, so um, get extra cornstarch and keep a couple extra on hand. Um, milk powder. You can use dairy milk if that's what you drink, or you can buy soy powder to make soy milks, or you can use, um, uh, there's also coconut powder that you can use. So uh, stock up on some of that in case there's no milk. Um, 
you'll have a stash of something else you can use. If you don't like the taste of powdered milk, use it for cooking. Um, you'll never notice the difference in your cooking. Um, always keep extra flour on hand. Um, wheat and just regular unbleached flour. Um, I would recommend having uh, quite a bit of that on hand. You can stick the whole bag in the freezer for a day or two and it'll kill any bugs that are in there. If you happen, I've never really had any bugs in my flour and get yourself a food grade pail and stick your flowers in there. Um, now you don't want to have so much flour that it's going to expire and go bad. So keep your stash fairly fresh by uh, renewing it and just replacing what you already have. So you need to rotate your food. That's important. Um, always have a stash of baking powder and baking soda. If you can't get yeast, you can make quick breads out of it. Uh, you can use it in, um, in cake recipes. There's lots of those out there. Um, teaming that with vinegar. You don't need to use eggs or dairy in your cakes. And I've made several different flavors of those and they turn out really nice and moist and they're really good. So um, keep um, baking powder and baking soda on hand. Baking soda, of course, you know, you can use for cleaning. You can use it as a deodorizer in your refrigerator. You can, uh, if you have accidents, doggy accidents on your carpet, you can sprinkle that on and have it absorb um, the urine and it'll deodorize it too. So baking soda has tons and tons of uses. So I would recommend keeping that and it's cheap. So now if you're really gonna get creative, get yourself some soybeans just regular old soybeans, then we'll try and get the non-GMO organic ones. I believe Lara beans, uh, they have uh, their own farm in Iowa, so they, they're American grown, um, and you can um, soak them in water overnight, and then you can grind them up in your blender with water and squeeze the milk out now, soy beans, you do have to cook that. It's not like nut milks, where you can just take the raw nuts and, and consume them that way. With the soy milk, you do have to cook it. But once you get that done, you can, um, you can make your own uh, tofu out of it by adding some um, lemon juice. It'll curd it up, and um, there's there's all kinds of videos on YouTube that you can watch and how to make your own um, your own tofu. Uh, Mary's Test Kitchen, she has a lot of really good recipes and very um, where you can use very basic ingredients and um, tofu is a, an excellent source of protein if you can't get meat. So consider uh, keeping some soybeans on hand just in case of emergency. Uh, they also have machines. They're, they're like um, uh, Soy Joy, I think, makes one where you can actually put the beans in, hit a button, and it does the whole process for you. So um, if you have the money, you can check into that, but it's not necessary. All you need is a blender and a pot to cook it. And um, sometimes soy will get uh, like a when you cook the milk, it will get like a um, like a skin on top, and you can keep that if you're uh, into vegan cooking at all. You can make all kinds of things with that, and it'll, like vegan chicken or whatever, and you can use that as the skin. Um, but for those of you that are meat eaters, that probably isn't of interest to you. I, I forget what they call it. Um, yeah, well, well, <laughs> senior moment. But anyway, you can save that skin and make different things out of it. Um, always have lemon juice on hand. Now you can freeze whole lemons 
like when they're on sale, scrub them up, um, freeze them, and limes too. You can uh, keep them in a bag in your freezer and then you can take them out. They do get very soft, but that's okay because you get a lot of juice out of them that way. So um, keep some lemons on hand or just buy the bigger you know, uh, containers of concentrate. That works just as great. So keep that on hand. I always have lemon juice um, or lime juice available even though I don't always have fresh. So that's an option, but you can use lemon and lime in so many different applications. Um, oh, yeast, if it's available, keep yeast. Uh, you can stick that in the freezer, or I keep my yeast in the refrigerator when I'm not using it, and um, I just use it straight out of the fridge, and it works great. The other day I made pizza dough, and <laughs> the pizza dough was just, the, the yeast was so active that um, the pizza turned out about this high, but it was really delicious. My grandson really liked it. He says, oh, you can make this again. I, I like it. So, um, but yeah, keep your yeast in the refrigerator, and I've never had a problem with that, so... Um, if you can't find yeast, make your own starter sponge. Um, there's tons of recipes for starters. Uh, you can use buttermilk, you can use water. Um, I made it with kombucha. In fact, I have a recipe somewhere in my, uh, my archives. Um, if you look in my um, recipe playlist, I have in there how to make kombucha. Uh, I use my kombucha that I've let go too long for vinegar. It makes a really, really good uh, dressing. You can use it just like you use apple cider vinegar, and it works out great. Which leads me to consider making your own kombucha. Um, I get my SCOBYs from uh, Amazon, and the, um, the site is um, Posy Mom. Um, I've gotten water kefir from her. I've gotten a couple different uh, scobies from her, um, and they're always quality. So check that out. It's Posy Mom, just like the flower, Posy. And uh, there, it's not that expensive. To buy a kombucha scoby, a large one is like $8, and she also sends you some um, kombucha with it, and you can make, make a whole gallon with it. So I make the continuous brew kombucha, which is so easy. And it's so expensive when you buy it in the store. I can't believe how much they get, you know, almost $3.50 or more for a, a little bottle of kombucha, you know. And, and making your own is, I like it much better. I think it's much more tasty. And you can uh, flavor it with different fruits. I like to use the Tarani syrups in there. They make sugar-free and they also make um, with sugar. Uh, now you can't use that when you first ferment it, but uh, if you want to just drink it and flavor it with something after it's fermented, you can add some of the syrups. It, it's just like adding syrups to coffees or teas and it's really delicious. So consider making your own kombucha and it's a probiotic, so it's healthy for you, and it's a, na a natural probiotic, and you can even use the scobies to make uh, like fruit leathers and dog treats and all kinds of different things. Um, uh, I have a book, it's, uh, I think it's called the Kombucha Bible, and it's about this thick, and um, there's all kinds of things that you can make and do and all kinds of teas that you can ferment. So, but if you can't afford a cookbook, go online. There's lots and lots of different YouTubers that are into kombucha that um, show you the process, how to do it, and it's, it's really easy. Don't be intimidated by it. If you're a kombucha lover, I highly recommend 
that you make and keep your own kombucha. Um, so keeping vinegar on hand, I always have a gallon of vinegar. You know, I'll, once I get a little low, I'll buy another gallon. So keep a couple gallons of vinegar handy. I, I'm sure you all know you can use it for cleaning. You can make uh, dressings out of it. You can you can use it uh, for for your skin, especially apple cider vinegar. Um, it's a natural uh, antibacterial um, substance. So always keep vinegar on hand. I always keep um, regular vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I have several different flavored vinegars. Um, and uh, it, it really adds a lot of flavor to foods, and it's so versatile. If you have baking soda and vinegar, you really don't need much else, even for cleaning. So I always keep vinegar on hand, and, it, and it's cheap. Um, let's see. Okay, coffees and teas. Um, I know some people don't drink coffee and tea, so this is more for people that do. Um, I always keep an extra stash of coffee, uh, whatever your coffee preference is. I keep two or three little containers of it always on hand. Uh, you can freeze coffee. I've done that before in the past, and it's perfectly fine. Um, but as I use one up, I buy a fresh one. And I always have coffee handy. So um, tea as well. Get your favorite teas. Um, keep them in a box, in an airtight box. I always mix and match my teas. And uh, almost every day I make a little container of uh, tea that I can either drink hot or iced. And I always have a beverage ready. Uh, even if somebody comes over, I can offer them an iced tea. And by blending your own flavors, um, you, you can make all kinds of different in, um, flavors with it. And then I also like to put the Torani syrups in there. And you can make um, chai lattes, you can make uh, coffee lattes. The, the sky's the limit. So uh, play with your food. I mean, it's, it's such a wonderful experience when you can play with your food. It, it's just a lot of fun. So um, another thing, I'm, I'm getting to the end of my list, I promise. Uh, another thing that I recommend that you always have on hand is sugar. Um, there's all kinds of sugar. There's, you know, of course, there's regular sugar. I, I use that for my kombucha because the kombucha doesn't care, you know, so um, that gets all eaten up when I ferment it. Um, and I like to, like to keep it on hand for hummingbirds. Um, of course, bakery, if you're into baking, you're going to need some sugar. You can, you can buy sugar in all kinds of stages of process. So depending on, on how much you like sugar processed, you know, that's personal preference. And I also keep my favorite sweetener available whether that's uh, stevia or monk fruit or xylitol or, you know, there's so many sweeteners out there. I don't like Splenda personally because I can't digest it. And I've read where it, uh, your gut doesn't know what to do with it. And I used to drink a lot of Diet Coke and it had Splenda in it and it really, really messed up my, my, my gut. I'm just now getting to the point where I can, um, it's a little more normal. And uh, I, I quit using that years ago. So, but if you can tolerate it, that's wonderful. But I always keep a stash of enough sweetener available for my coffees and teas and, and whatever else I like to drink. I even will put, sometimes I'll put the Torani syrup um, in water and just use that as a water enhancer. You, you can use the sugar-free, and I do believe that has Splenda in it if you don't want the calories. But I personally, I, I don't like water. I don't like the taste of it. 
So I know, weird, but I've never liked water. So in order to get me to drink it, I have to put some flavoring in it. So, um, okay, uh, seeds. Keep some seeds on hand. Um, you can make milks out of um, sunflower seeds. You can make like creams out of sunflower seeds. Um, I love pepitas, the salted ones on my salad. I think they're delicious, but I always keep a, a supply of seeds. Now, the seeds will go bad. You might want to consider putting them in the freezer because they, the oil, they're very high in oils and the omegas, and um, they will go rancid if, if you keep them too long. So I would recommend if you have a lot of them, keeping them in the freezer. Just a couple more things. Um, <coughs> cocoa powder or cacao, I would keep that on hand because you can make your own chocolate with it. Um, you can make, of course, bakery. You can use it in uh, chilies. You can use it in coffee. You can do it in all kinds of things, and it's a wonderful flavoring. And if it's cacao, it's very healthy for you as well. So I would recommend, you know, keeping a little stash of that. Now, cacao is not cheap. You know, Hershey's cocoa is way cheaper, but it's not as healthy for you either. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. But it makes a really good flavoring. Um, and it takes some foods up to another level. Okay, um, only a couple more things. Um, actually, one more thing, but they're all related. Coconut oil. Keep a stash of coconut oil. Now, I usually get refined and unrefined coconut oil. The unrefined, I like to use it in baking because even though it might have a slight coconutty, a flavor it's not in your face and it's really nice in cakes and cookies and you know where you don't want to use butter um, it's an alternative uh, to use coconut oil I've used it with nut milks to make ice cream um, I, one one time I made an ice cream I had uh, some really soft avocados and I made it with avocados and kiwis and bananas and I put a little coconut oil in there. And the reason that I put a little coconut oil in is to keep it from freezing so solid that you, it's no longer creamy. It, it's just a big block of frozen stuff. So um, I've done that before too, and it turns out really delicious. Um, I would also keep olive oil just because of the flavor. I use olive oil all the time. Now with olive oil, it does not have a very, um, you, you can't like deep fry and things in olive oil because it will smoke and burn. So um, you'll also need another type of oil like avocado or safflower um, if you like to do the higher smoke, um, smoking kind of um, frying. Um, Olive oil isn't your oil of choice, but olive oil is great to put in breads and um, dressings, dipping for bread, you know, when, with the spices. It's really good that way. So that's it for today as far as my list of what to stash. Please consider um, getting yourself a stash of food. So that, uh, you know, even if you're on a low income, I'm on a low income, but I manage to tweak out the money for this because I think it's important. And um, so th that's all I have for you today. And uh, thanks for visiting with me. I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. I hope you found it helpful. Um, and um, that's all I have. So... I wish you good health, abundant blessings. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.